Welcome to Monobiology. In today's lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about the leaf structures. This will begin our discussion about photosynthesis. And it's important, obviously, to understand the different parts of the leaf to understand a little bit better about how photosynthesis uh, works and how the plant uses the different parts that it has to ensure that it can get food to all the areas uh, that it has. So the leaf is where a lot of interesting things are going on. You guys should have a copy of this picture, and as we go through, I'm going to identify and explain what each thing does, and you should write that down as we go through. So the first thing on our list here is the waxy cuticle. Now the waxy cuticle can be found at both the top and the bottom of the leaf. So we can't see the bottom part of this leaf in this picture, so we're going to have to do the top. So this part here that you can see right there, uh, the kind of darker or lighter green part on the top there is the waxy cuticle and its purpose is to prevent water loss. Basically, as you folks know, uh, wax and water do not mix. So if you coat something in wax, essentially, it can, uh, the water can't escape. And that's what's happening with the leaf. The leaf is coated in a waxy substance and that prevents water loss, except for where the plant wants there to be water loss. All right, next thing on our list here are the palisade mesophyll cells. Okay, so these these guys here that are kind of sticking out, kind of like teeth a little bit, they kind of look like columns, are the palisade mesophyll cells. Now, mesophyll cells in general are cells where the, the vast majority of the photosynthesis takes place. And there are two types. There's the palisade mesophyll cells, as I've shown you here, and there's the spongy mesophyll cells, which are these guys. Okay, so spread kind of all throughout the leaf. Okay, and those are the primary, like I said before, the primary locations of photosynthesis. All right, next thing on our list is the stomata, which is singular, or stoma, which is plural. So these guys here are the openings, rather. I should undo that last one. The openings, kind of going up in like that, uh, are the stomata. Not all the way up into that space, but the actual opening right there and right there are called stoma. Okay, And you can actually see these, and we're going to do this in class. If you, if you take a, a leaf and you look at the underside of it on a microscope, you should be able to see these no problem. Okay, so the, the stoma are openings that allow gas exchanges, right? So water would evaporate through those openings, and that's going to drive a process called transpiration. As water evaporates, more water is sucked in through the roots from the ground into the, into the tree or into the plant, and eventually up to the leaves. All right, so evaporation, water is going out. So you could, if I was kind of doing this, I would draw a little H2O molecule here, and then I would show it kind of going out, H2O out. And the other thing that's going to go through those openings is the, is the, pro, uh, the, uh, the reactant to photosynthesis, which is CO2. You can't build sugars without carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide would go from the atmosphere out here into those air spaces, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Okay, So basically, the stoma are openings that allow gas exchanges between the leaf and the environment. Now, there's a couple of other things. I didn't label them. I want you to, though. So these guys here, on either side of the opening, you can see them on both sides here, are called the guard cells. And they can open or close depending on what the cell needs or wants to do. Right, so on a hot day, they may close so that the, the so that the plant doesn't lose too much water. But when the plant wants to open them to let more carbon dioxide in, it can do that too. And that brings us to the air space. Air spaces are abundant and usually exist in between the spongy mesophyll cells. So there's several air spaces, air pockets throughout here. I'll identify this. Obviously, there's one. Right, there's all over the place here. There's all kinds of air spaces. And the air spaces allow gas exchange between the air space and the cells. 
Okay, so carbon dioxide goes in, oxygen goes out. I forgot to mention also that oxygen is going to be released through here sometimes. But uh, carbon dioxide goes into the cells, oxygen goes out, and that's what the air spaces allow. And also water vapor is going to hang out in here until it's evaporated out. All right, that brings us to the vascular tissue. This area, oops, this area here is the vascular tissue. And vascular tissue is transport tissue. Basically, it's, it's tissue that brings materials to and from certain areas in the plant. And there's two types of vascular tissue in this particular leaf. We've got the phloem. So you've got the phloem here. And the phloem is responsible. It's right in here in this area. There's, you can kind of see two different. I'll, I'll draw a line to it. Basically, it's this area in here, this whole area in here. Okay, so that's the phloem. And the phloem is responsible for transporting materials in two directions. Right? It can transport materials back and forth between different leaves if it wants to. It can go from the leaf to the stem, the leaf to the to the ground, to the where the roots are, but it's two-way flow. Okay, it's two-way flow. Um, it transports materials to and from different structures in the leaf. Now, the other vascular tissue here would be the xylem. And it is on the outside of the phloem. So there's actually two areas here. Go around there. All right, so there's two areas. And the xylem is actually one-way transport. It only does flow in one way. And that's this way, from the roots to the leaves. Okay, and so you can imagine the xylem is responsible for transporting water and nutrients. Right, anything the plant absorbs from the soil has to get into the plant through the xylem. All right, so that in a nutshell is the leaf structures, and I hope you bring your questions to class, and we'll see you later.